Welcome back, boys and girls. I hope this all finds you well and healthy um, in this chilly December where we're learning at home a lot. I called up my librarian and I said, I'm not in the classroom right now. I read all the stories that I could find in my basement and around my house. And I was wondering if you happen to have snowmen stories or stories about snow since it's December and we should have some more coming. So she scooped up everything she had and she loaned me this one written by Troy Wilson. She went all the way down to the W's to find that. I notice on the spine, this title is really interesting. It does have a snowman on it, and it starts with the letter that forward starts with, and this is frosty, but not frosty like I normally see. The title is Frosty is a Stupid Name. So I have mixed emotions, but we never want to judge a book by its, co a, a book by its cover, so I'm wondering why the author would say Frosty is a Stupid Name, or why the snowman might not like their name. We open up to... An introduction page of a little girl making a snowman and then our words start on the next page it's a little small so i'll read it and then bring up the pictures closer frosty is a stupid name for a snowman at least that's what jenny fry thinks it's like naming a dog furry or naming a fish wetty or naming a slug slimy jenny would not settle for just any stupid name her snowman deserves a good name no a great name a name worth repeating down through the ages so I wonder if she doesn't like Frosty, what name she might come up with. So Jenny sits, she stands, she packs, she paces back and forth. Some names are too long, some names are too short, too hot or too cold, and then one name is just right. Bartholomew, she tells him. Bartholomew Hatley Fry, that's your name. Bartholomew doesn't react at all. Oh, I'm sorry, Jenny says, how rude of me. I forgot your hat. She places it on his head, and he begins, to he begins to dance around. He is much better at dancing than that silly old Frosty. He shakes and shimmies, he leaps and he twists, and he glides through the air like a snowflake. A man with a big black mustache gives Jenny his card. He wants to be Bartholomew's agent, and he wants to make Bartholomew a star. We'll get back to you, she says. Right now, we're going to the unicorn planet. So here's her and Frosty, or her and Bartholomew dancing, and then here is the man that offers the card. When I see his mustache, it reminds me of the original Strawberry Shortcake Purple Pie Man, who had a mustache like that too. Bartholomew and Jenny hop into their spaceship and they blast out of the Earth's atmosphere. As they touch down on the unicorn planet, Jenny rips up the man's card. I'm the only agent you'll ever need, she tells Bartholomew. Here's their spaceship on their travel past the, uh, the atmosphere and into the unicorn planet with all of the candies on the floor. And they each mount a unicorn and ride through forests of cotton candy and they ride along rivers of chocolate and they ride for days. Would you like to ride anything for days? When my friend and I used to ride horses when I was much younger, I always would ride for a little bit because it used to make my back really sore. They reach the royal palace just in time for the Feast of Sweets, and they sit with the royal family, and even better, they gobble up as much dessert as their bodies can hold. It isn't until Jenny's tenth helping of jelly bean soup that it hits her. Hmm. She looks out at Bartholomew as he dances with the queen, and she wonders, is Bartholomew really having any fun? What do you think? After all, She's got a huge imagination. She can see all kinds of things, spaceships, unicorns, palaces, you name it. But Bartholomew, she isn't so sure. Maybe all he sees is the front yard and the driveway and the house across the street. Well, Jenny thinks that's different. And she gulps down her last jelly bean before the palace fades away. Time for some real food, she declares, and she marches into the house. A few minutes later, she struts back outside with four peanut butter and jelly sandwiches on a platter. They look a little rough around the edges, but Jenny's quite sure that Bartholomew doesn't notice. They are, after all, his very first peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Bartholomew doesn't have a throat, so Jenny digs a hole in his belly and sticks two sandwiches inside, and then she covers them up. Don't worry, she says between mouthfuls. You're not missing much. Chewing is overrated. Anyway, 
peanut butter sticks to the roof of your mouth. See? She opens up her mouth as wide as she can and points to all the peanut butter stuck inside it. We have to let our body, our food settle, she tells Bartholomew. So we can't run around right now, but you know what I think? I think we should have a fashion show. You snowmen never get to dress up. So Jenny drags box after box of dad's old clothes outside. And then she dresses Bartholomew with every new outfit. She holds up a mirror so she can see him, so he can see himself. She tells him he looks great, even when he doesn't. Just... As Jenny drapes a house coat over Bartholomew, a snowball snacks him right between the eyes. Kyle, Jenny's little brother Kyle, giggling that sneaky little giggle of his, a second snowball slams into Bartholomew's belly and a third ricochets right off the side. Jenny opens her mouth to call mom, but then closes it. She scoops up some snow, crushes it into a ball and whips it at Kyle and she misses. So he runs. He, she hurls another and nails him right in the rump. He disappears around the corner before she can throw again. That's why I didn't make a little brother for you, Jenny groans. There are nothing but trouble, she says. She cleans Bartholomew up. You know, she says, watching for Kyle. This might be a good time to get away from it all. We need a vacation. And she loads Bartholomew onto her sled and pulls him around the block. She points out all the sights along the way. That creepy vacant lot. Her best friend Amber's house, graffiti at the bus stop, everything. After supper, Jenny shuffles outside with her school books and plops down beside Bartholomew. I hate bringing work home with me, she says. You're lucky. You never get homework. Between questions, she shows him her paintings from art class. Finally, it's time for bed. Jenny lays Bartholomew down, turns on her flashlight, and reads him a story. Then she reads him another and another, and she makes sure that he has plenty of time to look at the pictures. She closes the last book. Tomorrow's a school day. It's supposed to get warmer. Bartholomew will melt, but she doesn't tell him that. There's no point in giving him nightmares. In her imagination, Jenny can hear him talk. Thank you, he says. But he doesn't say that at all. He doesn't say anything. Maybe he doesn't think anything either. Or maybe he thinks all snowmen eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Maybe he thinks all snowmen go on holidays. And maybe it's just as well. Jenny covers his eyes with snow eyelids. She gives him a hug. Good night, she says. Goodbye, she thinks. When she's back inside the warm house, her eyes melt just a little. She dreams of the unicorn planet and she dances with Bartholomew until morning. And that's the end of Frosty is a Stupid Name. So I'm wondering what you're thinking about that. It's an interesting title. It was an amazing story in my book. Still not fond of the title, but um, she loves peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, and I'm guessing you might too. So I would love to hear your story about your imagination if you go on adventures with unicorns and kings and queens and palaces or a snowman that might come to life like Frosty. Or um, tell me how to do something like make your favorite food like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Stay well, friends. Till next time.